So today I go to the airport to hopefully pick up my new home on wheels. Uh, today I'll be answering some of your questions. I'm going to make me some um, dinner that I'll be taking with me to the airport. Why you may ask? Because today is one of those days where it's just like, man, living on the road has its ups and downs and it's, um, it's a lot. And today's one of those days because I have to spend about 12 hours at the airport. I have to go um, early my it, it's it my flight leaves tomorrow morning but you know i have to store my van uh in the place where i store it um i can't be storing it at no you know four in the morning uh because my flight leaves at seven in the morning and so i have to go early uh to store it so that i have a place to store my van it's frustrating, but that, that is the life of a nomad. That is my life as a nomad. And so I'm going to take you guys through my life. Um, I'm going to be making me some dinner for the airport. So I'm not spending a bunch of money on airport food and eating unhealthy. And, um, I'm going to answer some of your guys' questions from the last video because a lot of you do have valid questions. But for now, I need to, I'm already packed, ready to go. We did that in the previous video. I do need to make my bed. I got to get rid of some trash. I'm still in the desert. I got to cook. I got to get a shower and get dressed. So there's a lot that has to happen before I can leave. So first thing I'm going to do is make dinner and I'm going to take that with me to the airport. I've got some shrimp, some coconut rice, uh, some chickpeas, some coconut milk, and this uh, spicy curry paste that I got when I was in Jamaica. And this little container that I'm going to be using that I had my lunch meat in. So we're going to let this heat up and then we're going to make the shrimp. I don't want to season the shrimp too much just because I do have this this paste. As a matter of fact, I probably won't even, I won't even season the shrimp. I'll just let the curry paste and coconut milk and stuff do all the work. Just throw some of that in there. It's coconut milk. It does look a little clumpy, but that is how coconut milk is. Let's throw this rice in here. Which is also coconut rice, but artificial, right? Absorb all of those flavors. We'll start with a little bit. You don't want to get too crazy. I don't have anything to wash them with, fam, so the heat will kill it. Um, strap for time, but I don't really feel like washing it. I do, I just don't feel like it. The few questions that I put on the screen, those are just a few examples of several of the different community members asking those types of questions in the previous video. So I kind of want to answer it now because yesterday I didn't go into detail. I didn't explain it, but I'll explain it now. But So the question was, you know, what do you mean by stick out like a sore thumb? I don't get it. I got some other questions of wouldn't, ch wouldn't you just, can you just change the color of your van? Um, and then the other question was, you know, uh, vans are common, you know, what, what, you know, why, why the, the second vehicle? Very valid questions. So first of all, the change of color of the van is going to cost a lot of money. So I'm, I'm just not, that's not even an option. But the big reason is last year, I briefly mentioned it. Uh, you guys flooded my comment section of one of my videos to tell me that somebody had filmed my location, filmed it, say, hey, look at Nomadic Introvert, filming my location where I'm at, my van filming me and put me on YouTube. It was enough of you guys that got my attention. I did some research and I found the video and it was just like, you know, I put myself on, 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 online, you know, uh, I, I put myself online for the world to see. So this is the kind of stuff that's going to happen to me. So I was like, whatever, but further looking at this individual's videos, uh, cause there were several of me, you know, they did another video kind of, not kind of, they did another video talking about what they observed me doing over a span of a couple days, a few days. 
how I never left my van, how do I shower, I didn't leave, and I'm just like, wow. So you not only, you know, filmed my location and put me on YouTube, but you also talked about what you observed me doing over a span of a few days, which means you've been watching me. So that right there was huge. I never ask you guys, and I will never ever ask you guys to ever get involved in that stuff. I just want y'all to leave it alone, forget it, you know, but I am very grateful that you guys came to me and let me know because I would have never known. Because of you guys, I never will ever go back to that location in that state ever again. And I'm, I'm not going to say the state. I'm, I'm just not. But I will never go back to that location again. Ever. So that was one of the reasons why I started thinking about, okay, it's time, it's time to start thinking about a second vehicle. And then just over the span of my YouTube career, being on YouTube several different incident incidences of me receiving threatening emails and threatening uh comments in my comment section y'all don't see the threatening comments because i do have those threatening words filtered out keywords filtered out so that i'm able to see it but you guys are not so all of that coupled with being watched and have it being filmed and putting on youtube i was just like you know what it's time you i can't put a price on my life what am I waiting for? I'm tired of waiting. I'm just going to do it. So that's when I started researching with the help of my best friend and, you know, just figuring out what kind of second home I want, you know, how, you know, how, how effective can it be in helping me with my other adventures? How stealth can it be? How common is this, is this vehicle? Things like that. And with the help of my best friend, I finally found the perfect second home on wheels. And that is why I am taking a flight, one way flight, hopefully, Everything checks out. I look at the vehicle, I inspect it, I look at the second home on wheels and I like it and I purchase it. Because I can't I can't put a price on my life. They may be they may be trolling, but I, I don't know that. I, I'm not trying to fit, find out. What I've learned is when someone shows you who they are, you believe them the first time and don't give them another chance to show you again because there may not be a second chance. Um so I just want the option to switch between my van and my second home, which is gonna be a lot more stealthier. Is van life over? Am I just gonna put this van in storage and never use it again? Absolutely not. I plan on doing a ton more adventures in this van. I love this van, this is my home. It's paid off. But I want the option to either have adventures in this van where I have a full kitchen and bathroom and stove microwave and refrigerator and just epic adventures and want to go out and do that kind of thing or do I want to be a little more stealthier and go out and do my adventures and nobody know that I live in that someone is living in that that vehicle I just want the option to switch between being stealthy and not being stealthy because this van is anything but stealthy if you're not in Utah Nevada Arizona Oregon Washington State the coast you're gonna stick out in a van like this because any other state besides those states there's not a lot of RVs or Florida Florida too you could be in Florida with an RV and I'll blend just fine because everybody's you know a lot of snowbirds and stuff like that but outside of those states I'm going to stick out every Walmart mall gas station it just I stick out I'm the biggest vehicle in the parking lot so that's what I mean by sticking out like a sore thumb like i said i'm not complaining about my life i am grateful for god for allowing me to live the life that i live i'm grateful for you guys and your 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 amazing support and i understand by putting my life out online this is what comes this is what you get but i don't i can do something about it i can do i could try my best to be as stealthy and as safe as possible when it comes to my life so hopefully that answered your questions um van life is not going away i will still be doing epic adventures in the van i love my van it's paid off it's not going anywhere but i just want the option to switch between my van and something more stealthier and um yeah here you go fam first bite goes to you have that bite right there.
I mean, look at that. Looks good, don't it? All right. Mm. Man. Man, oh man. I'm at Planet Fitness and I'm gonna get ready to run in and take a shower, but this is a new sign that has been put, in, put up because I have been in this Planet Fitness several times before and I have never seen this sign. Look at that sign. No overnight parking. Authorized parking vehicles towed at owner's expense. This is new. And right there is Planet Fitness. I guess uh, RVs have been overnight parking. There's an RV there. There's one on. There's one behind that one. And then you've got that Walmart right there. Man, I, you know it, the problem is, is that there are people that are so inconsiderate that they are ruining it for people like me who are actually doing this for a lifestyle. They are making it harder for nomads like me to exist in a space like this. And I only blame those that are, you know who, who you are if you're watching. The ones that overstay their welcome, the ones that are loud when they do stay, leave garbage and trash, pitch up their whole van and RV like they're at home and bring out the lawn chairs and open the awnings and, and never leave. You guys are the ones that are making it so difficult for nomads that actually want to live this lifestyle to actually live the lifestyle. I mean, it's going to come to a point where the only places nomads like me can stay are the desert, are the mountains, which I don't mind. But sometimes, you know, you want to come into the city and get stuff done and you don't have time to make it back to the mountains before it gets dark. Then what do we do? So just please be considerate of the places that are still allowing us to stay. Bass Pro Shops and other places like that. And there are a few Walmarts left in America that you can still stay. Just please be considerate because it is literally not fair that people like me, we have to suffer because of dirty, nasty, inconsiderate people. Like, come on. We got to do better. All right. Enough with the speech let me get in here and get a shower and i'll see you guys uh, at the airport I'm exhausted. I have been at the airport for about five hours now and I still got about six hours to go. Uh, my flight starts boarding around six. Uh, it takes off at seven. And um, I saw something that really bothered my spirit, man. It, it bothered me I, I, to the point where I didn't want to eat, uh, to the point where I didn't want to film. I, I'm now just picking up the camera and I've been here for over five hours. When I first got here, I was had to go sit down because I still had a while before I wanted to go through security even though I'm not checking any bags in. I walked past this couple, I don't know if they were husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend, but the man was arguing with the, the girl. Well, not arguing, he was yelling at her, like verbally abusing her. He was calling her an, a bleeping idiot. You're a bleeping idiot, you idiot, over and over. He goes, I thought you said you would never book with Spirit again. Apparently he was mad because she booked the flight with Spirit. He's like, after the experience I had, you promised me. I mean, he was cussing her out, screaming and hollering as she was walking towards him away from the Spirit counter. You could see that they had left their bags and she just kind of had her head down. Like she was kind of used to that kind of treatment. I mean, he was going in on her. 
it was bad. She had her hands full with her purse and stuff. She had some baby bags. She had her food in her hands. And he's sitting on the floor next to the baby cart, just yelling at her from across the way as she's walking towards him. And as she's walking towards him, he's still cussing her out, calling her a bleeping idiot. She drops her food and it goes everywhere. He doesn't flinch to help her. She looks depressed and sad. She's trying to clean it up as he's yelling at her. It was so bad that one of the spirit employees, a male, approached him to try to calm him down and he, he cussed the spirit guy out. He was like, you idiot, you idiot, you idiot, over and over and over, cussing her out, screaming and hollering, I can't do this with you, I can't. He's like, you know what, go get our bags, go get them now. Because I guess they, I guess, like I said, they left him at the counter. I have never in my life seen something like that. Like. My heart broke for her. She looked like she was used to that treatment. Like, she's used to being verbally abused like that. And I, I just literally was freaking in shock that he was treating her like that. You gotta know your worth, man. I know it's easier said than done, but it's sometimes I get it's hard to walk away. But when, when someone treats you that bad, you gotta ask yourself, man, is it is it worth it? I mean, gosh, if he treats her like that in public, imagine what she goes through behind closed doors. That my, my heart broke for her. I lost my appetite. I didn't want to film. I felt so bad for her. I mean, the nerve of some people, man. <sighs> so I am uh, at the airport, and usually around this time, it's almost midnight. It's quiet. Usually there's nobody here, but there is a lot of people here waiting on their bags because it's spring break. Um, almost spring break or may, spring break might have started. So I'm at the airport where there's a lot of people at almost midnight when it's usually nobody here. And trust me, I'm used to being here because I've been flying a lot this year and towards the end of last year. So wild. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but look at all those people coming. I mean, that is wild. Look at all those people. I mean, droves of them. Crazy. When I tell you I am hungry, I finally have an appetite. Look at that. Ooh, it's gonna be so, so good. Even though this is cold, I mean, look at that. I know it's gonna be delicious. Mmm. Spectacular. Gone. I'm so sad, it's over. So I'm finally at my gate, waiting to board my flight on Delta. Um, I should have picked my seat when I booked this flight, but I was being cheap, I didn't want to pay the extra. And your girl, for the second time in history, got a middle seat. Thankfully, it's a short couple hour flight with a layover in Atlanta and then on to my next state. But man, I am, ah, uh, no more. Next time, I don't care what it costs, I'm not getting a middle seat. I, I literally mentally and physically cannot do a middle seat. And look at me doing a middle seat. Um, but other than that, I fell asleep like around midnight, woke up around 3.30 and I was like, crap, I gotta get through security. Uh, getting through security was very smooth, no issues. And now I'm just waiting to board. I got about an hour and maybe like 45 minutes, something like that before I board. So I'm just gonna try to get a little bit of sleep and shut eye before I board. But the one thing I will say I like about Delta is that you get your own little TV screen and you can pick the movies and stuff. So I'll just watch one movie and by the time that movie's over, I'll be in Atlanta, so. So I am in Atlanta and I am waiting to board my flight. I probably got about another hour. Um, it's been smooth uh, flights, it's been very, very smooth. Um, on the flight, my TV didn't work. I had a middle seat, TV didn't work, so I didn't get to watch any movies, but Delta gave me 
500 free miles. Um, so I think that's super dope for them to do that. Uh, they tried to fix the problem, they couldn't. So win-win for both of us, right? Happy customer, 500 free miles. Um, so now I'm just waiting to board. I'm not gonna get anything to eat right now. I just wanna get to my hotel. So, and prepare for hopefully getting this second home on wheels. I'm really hoping this works out. Online, everything looked good. Um, everything checked out, did heavy, heavy research. But you know, online is different from in person, so I'm really, really crossing my fingers. All right, guys, I'll see you uh, at my final destination. Hello fam, I finally made it to Florida and um, this is uh, the place where I hopefully will be purchasing my new home on wheels. Uh, so it has been a long day of travel, I am starving. Man, but uh, I know you guys want a quick room tour because this hotel is very, very unique. <laughs> Crazy. But uh, let me give you a quick room tour and then I'm gonna get a shower, grab some food, and uh, prepare for hopefully a really good day tomorrow. Here's the bathroom. I mean, this hotel is definitely one of a kind. Here's the shower. You got a nice refrigerator, no microwave, but that's okay. I, I would, was hoping there was a microwave. And you've got like towels and toiletries, a beautiful sink, a nice vanity mirror. I mean, look at the exposed brick. Not even brick, I'm sorry, concrete. Look at the concrete, that is beautiful. Nice kind of lighting here. A nice king bed. And then uh, they left a little note and some nice treats for me. Uh, you don't really got a good view out the window, but that's that. And then you got this really freaking awesome chair. And then you've got this nice flat screen TV. You got some shelving. And that's the room tour, guys. It is freaking amazing. This is nice. And then you've got an AC unit that's on right now. And this, it's very comfortable in here. Very, very comfortable. Okay, room tour complete. I ordered DoorDash and I don't know if I'm gonna do that again. It's really, really expensive. Um, really expensive. I think, is this, I think this is the first time I've ever used DoorDash. But I got some Indian food for the first time. My first time ever trying authentic Indian food. I got some um, butter chicken. I got some garlic naan. But I've got some of these. Um, if I can remember, I'll put the name on the screen. Yep, this is uh, basmati rice. Wow, that's a lot of butter chicken. And this is the butter chicken. So let's try the garlic naan first. We'll dip it in this butter chicken. I've seen people do that. Put it up. The first bite goes to you. Have that bite right there. My turn. Mm -hmm -hmm. This butter chicken tastes so ridiculous. Okay, now let's try the actual chicken, butter chicken, with this uh, basmati rice. First bite goes to you. Now my turn. Mm. 
Why have I not tried Indian food before? What took me so long? Something is seriously wrong with me. It took me this long to try Indian food. Like authentic. Like something ain't right with me. Now let's try these. I forgot what they're called. First bite goes to you. Now my turn. Mmm. Well, that's spicy. Well, that's delicious. It's some kind of like vegan. Mmm-hmm. Whoa. Oh my goodness, Indian food, what? Mm, mm, mm. This don't make no sense how good this is. It really doesn't make any sense. Ooh. I'm praying there's a microwave in the lobby because if not, I'm gonna be eating cold Indian food tomorrow. Because I'm not wasting this. Also, too, fam, I don't know if I mentioned this at all in the previous video. I can't remember. I am actively looking for land in several states. <clears throat> I, I, I need a home base. <laughs> Your girl needs a home base. This morning I had breakfast as you can see I had a waffle with syrup I had bacon I had eggs and sausage and everything was pretty decent the only thing I didn't really care for was the the eggs you know they the watery powder eggs I, I finished it I'm not gonna waste it um, I finished it uh, I feel nice and energized now um, what I like about going through third parties to book trips like Expedia or booking.com you get points you get different levels and uh, I was Expedia listed me as a VIP member so instead of paying for breakfast I got it free which was I, I was happy for so that was a, a big plus um, but I hope you guys enjoyed what it's like um, you know being a nomad living on the road it, it, it's a little bit it's difficult because for me I'm in the process of essentially buying a new home uh, which is you know a home on wheels a vehicle and so you know I have to leave my other home in storage board a flight, one-way ticket to come here to Florida and hope everything works out. Um, it, it's a lot. It, it's different from if you're a homeowner or you live in an apartment and how you would navigate looking for a new home or another home. Uh, it's just I wanted to give you a little bit of an insight on what it's like to be a nomad um, looking for another home, um, whether it be a piece of property or something like that. Um, it's a lot uh, and for me at times it's a little bit overwhelming but you know it's something I want to do so I push forward and I, I just get it done uh, so today is the big day hopefully everything works out but I hope you enjoyed the video uh, thank you for hanging out with me uh, I appreciate you guys I appreciate all of your support you guys rock I will continue to say this you guys are the best community very humble and kind and I appreciate it all but I'm out Thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you guys in my next video. Take care. Peace.